Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about whether risk is needed for thrills, and this time, a topic I saw raised by someone online, whether thirst is needed to enjoy a drink. This person was raising issue with the whole idea of heaven by arguing that certain things about it sound good at first, but ultimately wouldn't make people happy. They said that some of life's best creature comfort style experiences, such as drinks, are most enjoyed when we've gone without them for a long period of time. For instance, a man who's been dehydrated in the desert will get more out of a glass of cold water than a man who's already had a liter of water to drink within the last hour. I'll go further and say that we know heaven has this aspect to it, at least in part, because of what Jesus says in the Gospel of Luke. A certain creditor had two debtors, the one who owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And whereas they had not wherewith to pay, he forgave them both. Which therefore of the two loveth him most? Simon answering said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said to him, Thou hast judged rightly. Luke seven forty one to 43 God is loved more by those who he forgives of more and worse sins. This is one reason that he gives for his eagerness to forgive those whose sins are many and serious. In the Beatitudes, he implies something similar to this when he says that blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Our deprivation of certain goods definitely affects the depth with which we enjoy those goods when we get them, and I don't think heaven necessarily changes that reality all that much. However, so what? Even if the guy next door in heaven who died of thirst in the desert after three days of suffering is able to enjoy cold drinks more deeply than I do, why should that bother me? It's not as though I have some need that isn't being met, or that I have some reason to be jealous of my neighbor. If he can experience the pleasure of a drink of water more intensely than I can, how would I even be aware of that? Why would I hold his happiness against him? There might well be other pleasures that I can experience more strongly than him. Should he hold that against me? It seems like the person suggesting this is assuming that in heaven we continue to experience this decrease in gratitude and appreciation when receiving good things, like we do here on earth. However, I don't think there's any reason to suppose that's true. It could be that those in heaven gain appreciation of the things they receive, because God reveals to them the true goodness of those things as they receive them. It could be that the saints retain the same appreciation that they had during their lives, so that those who are in need in this life will appreciate good things more than those who weren't. There are other possibilities as well. There just doesn't seem to be any reason to assume that our natures won't or can't undergo any kind of large change in this regard while moving to heaven. The person who brought this up also mentioned the issue of how food is prepared in heaven being a concern, but again, we're talking about a God who can create the universe out of nothing and multiply loaves and fish easily. The occasional miraculous intervention when preparing food or drinks is to be expected in heaven. Indeed, it's a little silly to suggest or imply that there could be a heaven without miracles. They also raise the issue of free will in heaven, but I already addressed that issue in episode 377. Check it out at the link in the video description. Next, can those in heaven be happy with the knowledge of hell? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.